So I'm going to ask you to tell me what is going on in this painting. It looks like it is either almost dusk or just after dawn based on where the sun is in the background. So a small yellow circle which I'm assuming is sun. Yes. Okay, so you're offering two possibilities with respect to the, the time of day that this is set and um, thinking either early in the day or late because the uh, position of the sun in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, all right, what more? I agree with Kayla on the time of day, um, but I think the sky is the color the way it is because of the burn. Um, it's kind of smoky and it causes that reddish color in the sky that we get when we are in burn season in Kansas. Okay. So you're expressing agreement but also offering another possibility for why the sky has the appearance it does in terms of not just the, the rosy color but also that it looks kind of hazy, possibly cloudy or smoky. And you, point, and you draw our attention to that there's fire um, in the image, yeah. I think the pattern of the fire is pretty consistent with how a field burn would go out here in Kansas because typically it started in one spot and it'll go different directions. It's, I feel like, less likely to be a wildfire that's going through because typically a wildfire will have one front and a circle, unless it's really cool. Right, so you pointed out that you can recognize something about the pattern of the fire and uh, you provided some, some great evidence for that and that, that there's in a line, it looks a little bit more organized and controlled as opposed to a wildfire. And not only that, it, it reminds you of a setting that it could easily be in Kansas um, with the, um, uh, a, a controlled prairie burning. Yeah, what more? So there's an animal on the left side of the painting and it uh, seems like a cattle based on the shape and uh, the general features of the cattle. But it's also weird because if it's a burning on the prairie, we we'll probably won't put the animal in the circle there. Okay, so you've drawn our attention to the animal that's in the image and um, based on its shape, you feel that it's probably bovine, um, but it seems uh, a strange um, position for the animal to be allowed to remain on the pasture when there's when there's a fire burning. Um, can I ask you uh, to be a little bit more specific about what you see in the shape that reminds you of a bovine? Uh, the bulky head and uh, this animal have four legs and the uh, black color of the animal. Okay, great. So the color as well as the bulkiness of the, of the head and the way that a lot of the weight is carried on the, on the four legs. I'm going to have to contrast Z a little bit. I see more of a dog when I look at that figure based on it could, that head structure looks like it's got an open mouth and a lot of ear and then the tail doesn't look as much like a the tail of a cow or a bull it looks more like a dog and the fact that its abdomen is more tucked like a dog would be I think it's just a close-up dog as opposed to a cow. You're providing some evidence that might support it like it's a canine um, and uh, Drawing our attention to some pretty specific details about the, the open mouth and the floppy ear, and uh, not only that, but sort of the contour of how the abdomen is, is tucked up, and that reminds you um, of a dog. Also, the position makes more sense because if it, going on the assumption it is a controlled burn, someone started it, and most people have a farm dog. <laughs> okay. So drawing on the entire context of the image, it seems more natural that a dog might be accompanying whoever started this fire as opposed to leaving, um, 
one of the uh, livestock out in the field. Anything more? I'd say this fire has been burning for a while based on how smoky the sky appears to be as well as the trees in the top right corner that appear to be previously burned. Okay, so some evidence. Uh, the sky tells us uh, maybe also about how long the fire has been burning. That's quite a bit of smoke has accumulated and that uh, those trees up there perhaps have been affected by the fire which is now no longer in that specific area. I interpreted the trees as being in the winter time because mm -hmm. that's typically what burn season would be and they don't have any leaves because it's winter and the color is more a function of it's either I was imagining it being early dawn with the pink sky like an early sunrise and just based on the lighting if the sun's that way that's just the shadow of some trees okay. in the wintertime. So another possibility is that the trees are bare of leaves because of the, the winter season um, which uh, in your experience would match well with the time that a burn would be um, established and again the, the early morning um, seems to uh, make uh, uh, fit the context of winter burn might be I agree with Emily. I was thinking that the trees were in winter and that the sky was so so hazy because it's burn season, so there's probably a lot of fields around the area that are also burning. And just accumulation of smoke from everywhere. Okay. Then so we, with the animal oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. With the animal I am leaning more towards a dog, but it is very ambiguous because it kind of looks like a cat as well, but it changes like the, I guess, the size of the fire, how I would interpret how big the fire is, whether it's a small dog or like a large bovine, how big the flames would be. Okay. So you agree that there's uh, definite ambiguity about that figure, um, but also point out how our interpretation of that figure is going to affect our perception of the scale of the image. and. Um, and prior to that, uh, your comment sort of got to the larger, you're, you're imagining not only what we can see in this image, but what might be going on in the vicinity when you refer to there being probably other birds in the area contributing to the smokiness. So you're kind of taking this even outside of the perspective of the image. Okay, what do we think is going on in this painting? I think it's interesting how we get the perception of the monkeys. They seem like they're at a really high elevation, possibly like in the mountains. Um, and it kind of looks like they're looking down on maybe like through the clouds because it's kind of hazy towards like a city. Okay, so you've pointed out that you think these are monkeys. What, what makes you think we're looking at monkeys here? Um, just the shape of their anatomy. Um, their body language, the way that they're walking, um, the shape of their face and their tails. Yeah, and then you pointed out that they're kind of bigger, so you're you're thinking they're closer to us or higher up than um, what you pointed out as a city or buildings back here. What else? I think it's really interesting how the monkeys. That's the best way I can describe them. They look like monkeys, they have monkey form, but yet they're not realistic because they're totally see-through. You can see the details of the background through their form. Okay, so you're pointing out that these are a little bit, it's a little bit iffy because they look like just um, outlines of what we're calling monkeys and not actual silhouettes or um, painted figures. Interesting. On that note, their feet aren't placed on any specific flat surface. They're superimposed on top of the outline of the rocks below. They're not actually walking on anything. That one has his foot in midair. <laughs> okay, yeah, so there's there seems to be some rocks that they could be on, but yet their feet don't look like they're actually making contact with those um, rocks. The texture and shape of the like rocks on the in the front of the image match the texture and shape of little like mountains in the back. So I, it looks like the city is either in like a 
valley or a gorge of some kind and in between these two mountain ranges? Yeah, so we're calling these, maybe these are two mountain ranges because they're um, kind of textured the same and our city is between the two ranges. Kind of going off of that, the colors seem to be very different though based off the mountain. These are deep and darker and then on the, the top of the, the picture they're much lighter in color. Yeah, so these are kind of dark and gloomy colors, darker, and these ones are lighter kind of in the same uh, color range as wherever our city is in the middle between the two ranges. Mm -hmm. So I think the city view on the right side of the picture is more like a imaginary, like small bubbles in the in the mountains background because it looks more realistic than the other objects in this painting. Mm -hmm. So some things seem more realistic, and some things seem a little more um, like imaginary. I agree with that. Based on the perspective of the cityscape, it looks like we're viewing it off into the distance. And the way it's situated between the two sets of mountain ranges, that wouldn't make sense. We'd be looking down on it more as opposed to viewing it off into the distance, if that were the case. Okay, so maybe our perspective is a little bit um, weird here, where the city kind of looks like it was place there and not really in line with our what we're calling mountain ranges here. Hmm? The city kind of just like fades off too. It doesn't have like a distinct end, which makes it like seem odd for just being like central in the valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our city's not not really clear where it starts or ends or what's around it. It's kind of just fading in and out there. We also have these characters up at the top that even further draws your attention to the fact it's not like a real cityscape or something like that because there's very obvious writing on it. Yeah, so are these, is this writing on a wall or is this kind of um, other characters that are just up where like the sky should be kind of a thing? I kind of took it as like interpreting it, not that we're in nature, the monkeys are in nature, but it's a combination of maybe the monkeys are living in the city and in the mountains is where they naturally are occurring, I guess, or live. Um, and so since they're not technically on the mountain range themselves, they're kind of floating on <laughs> air, so to be. Uh, it's like they're looking at the town or the city and technology and everything. That's where they are currently, but they want to be in the mountains. Interesting. So maybe we're in the city and these monkeys would rather be seen in the mountain range or vice versa. They're in the mountain and think they're seeing part of the city or something. Yeah, very interesting. What's going on in this image? It appears to be a portrait of somebody based on how he's sitting and um, he looks kind of posed with his hands crossed. So you're saying kind of the way that the figure is posed, it's not natural, it looks like he's sitting for someone to paint a portrait. Mm -hmm. This portrait, it looks like kind of like a hybrid of both female characteristics and male characteristics. Um, I don't know, just kind of the more softer appearance of like the ear and the back of the neck look more feminine to me and like the wrist um, in the shirt underneath the collared um, flannel look more feminine versus like obviously the facial hair, um, the shape of the nose, um, the lips, and kind of the fingers look more manly. Um, so kind of a cross between woman and man. Okay, so you're seeing different, I guess, anatomical differences between things that you would see more soft and feminine, like the neck and the shape of the ear, um, kind of the thin wrists, and then the masculinity of the hands and the 
five o'clock shadow and uh, shape of the nose. To me, it looks like a single person that had photographs taken from multiple different angles and then compiled together because for instance, the left, or I guess that's the right eye, looks like it was, the perspective looks like it's straight on, but the face, there's quite a bit of the face and the ear that looks like it's almost from the side. There's a part of the nose that looks straight on and there's a part of the nose that looks from the side. There's a part of the, I would imagine the left eye that looks like it's facing the opposite direction of majority of the face in the portrait, but they've all been compiled together to make one picture. So you're saying this is kind of a collage of, um, I don't know if different faces are the same face, but taken at different angles. We have straight on and then some profile and then even profile the opposite direction and kind of all compiled into one face. I think the background versus the, the subject is very different. The background, it's all like uniform and not very crisp. And then the, the man in the front has a lot of different angles and it's, it's very clear, but uh, it's just like an odd combination of the, the foreground and background. So you're saying that there's again a just juxtaposition between kind of a sharper, more angular, um, crisp, figure in the front and then the background is softer and more, um, I guess, neutral or blended. Mm -hmm. I agree with Emily, um, not just so much with the face as well, but then also the shirt. It's different angles on the shirt as well. You've got multiple kind of collars up around the neck and different folds that don't really match the pattern. It looks like it's from different angles. So you're, you the can shadow. see again the same things where the pattern is the same but you can see that it's going in different directions and that um, the collar angles are all different as well. Kind of similar to the way that the face is put together. Parts of it look like a photograph and part looks like a painting. What do you see that makes you see that? Well, especially when I look at that eye that's facing us, that looks really like a, a color photograph. But the background, as someone noted, that's real hazy and muted, doesn't look like a photograph to me. It looks like painted landscape. And what makes, what do you see that makes you think that it's painted? I guess you have said so. Yeah, just, I guess it, it looks just suggestive and kind of vague. Um, I almost feel like I can see brush strokes, but it's kind of hard from this distance. It just doesn't look like a photograph to me. So again, you're talking about the differences between the, the like Christmas and realism of the face, um, that it's very detailed and crisp, like a color photograph, whereas the background is more muted. Um, there's no definite shapes to the, the landscape. And then you can see even some technique of, of painting where you can't see that in the face. I think it's a really interesting comparison or juxtaposition, whatever you want to call it, of different technologies because you see what looks 
based on the brush strokes of the background, what looks like a painting with obvious elements of photography and also what looks like Photoshop or something like that because of how the different photos are compiled on top of each other. And I'm sorry, but that bright red, what looks like undershirt is very, it stands out so different from everything else that I wouldn't be surprised if that was like a digitally made texture as opposed to like a photograph, just because it's so different from the rest of the pictures. Yeah, so you're kind of describing all of just like different techniques in the same image where there's painting as well as photography, as well as digital art, um, all in one image. And put together awkwardly. Like and so not seamlessly, it's no. very obvious that it's different techniques. Yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> What's going on in this image? Is this free response? Yes. Um, to me, it looks like someone's carving apart a globe, like a pumpkin. So uh, we have a, a figure here that is uh, cutting, cutting a globe like a jack-o'-lantern. I see Andy Griffith teaching Opie about naval World War II battles. So, describing sort of the action in the whole image, uh, naming a figure of, of Andy Griffith, his son Opie, um, and then naval World War II, a specific set of events being instructed. Um, what do you see that makes you say uh, Andy Griffith and, and Opie, those particular characters? Well, the boy really looks like Opie. Um, and then I just insinuated the father figure being Andy Griffith. So noting that the features and, and haircut of the smaller figure uh, remind you of that character and then extrapolating um, the the father figure here um, seems would, would then be Andy Griffith. Um, and then you also made the interpretation of World War II naval battles. Um, so what do you see that brings to mind that particular episode? Uh, where he's carving is close to some, some of the major battles, like the bigger cut section is kind of close to where Hawaii is. Um, and then the part that he's currently cutting is close to Japan. So noting the, the locations of the cuts on the globe and, and inferring um, si significance to those, those sites that are being cut. What more? I'm going to go out on a limb and say a father picking and choosing what information his kid needs to learn. Um, so U S is known as having kind of a, I don't know, like a thought that I guess we're better than the rest of the world. And so none of the pieces are coming out of the U S. So I don't know. It's kind of like picking and choosing what information he wants his kid to know. Um, I don't, I can't figure out why we have the chemistry signs down there though. Um, what their importance is. So adding some more interpretation here that, uh, again, we've got selective sites noting that they don't appear to be part of the U.S., uh, but that these figures um, seem to be um, American uh, with the, the father and the son instructing um, and commenting on on that when we instruct, there's selection in those, the things we choose to teach. Um, Maybe going along with that is like his hand 
I guess if we're looking at it, his hand looks like it would be like kind of protecting America. It's, it's like over top where you can't cut it. So if we're going along with Ian's theory. So possibly in support of that theory and, the, and perhaps protectionism for part of the globe that the hand is cradling versus the part that is being cut. It, furthermore, on those theories, uh, they're wearing red, white, and blue. So, drawing attention to the color scheme here and noting that we have the traditional American flag colors of red, white, and blue on the characters, perhaps supporting their uh, affiliation with the U.S. I think my eyes keep getting drawn down to the elements down at the bottom, like Ian was saying. I can't, I see that it spells out man cutting globe, but I'm not really sure why they're there. So coming back to this series of, of squares down here, noting that reading the letters across, uh, it, it seems to spell out the action in the in the image, but still unclear how they connect. Mm -hmm. 